Oh, God is good. And all the time. Ah, that was awesome, man. Like I think we're all skinny at the back now for a water. <laughs> Praise God, that's awesome. Um, sharks. Oh man. Um, hi everyone. My name is Lossa. Um, 27 years of age. Um, born and raised in South Auckland. Um, just just here to share just my testimony on how I came to Christ and what He has done in my life. Um, man, He's done many things, many many things. Um, so, yeah, just bear with me. Um, yeah, he's done so much. Man, God is good. And, um, okay, so, growing up, growing up, I was really lost. I was, I was honestly really lost. Um, and I told myself, no, nah, I'm all good. <laughs> I'm all good. I'm all right. I'm all right. Um, but five years old, um, five years old, my first ever memory growing up, um, I was sexually molested by a sibling of mine. And um, from then on, just so much stuff had happened um, in my life. Like, that, that was my first ever memory growing up. And, like, um, I was honestly so broken. Uh, oh, dear. Oh, yeah. Um, I was honestly so broken for a very long time. Um, I grew up with um, 11 siblings um, and, and mom and dad. Um, we grew up in a very, very um, broken family. Um, Sharks, broken family, grew up and was always an angry child. I was that kid that um, walked into the room and if there was no butter, I was angry. <laughs> I was angry. And um, yeah, I was just angry at a lot of things, always trying to channel that anger into so much things, but I, I couldn't do it. And um, far out, uh, growing up, I, I was addicted to so many things. Um, I was addicted, I, I was addicted to pornography. I was addicted to um, lust. Lust was a massive thing in my life. Um, I grew up always angry, um, always in fights. Um, yeah, I was in a lot of fights, always the bully. Um, a lot of fights, a lot of um, anger, a lot of um, far out, heaps of stuff, eh? Um, but yeah, so then um, I grew up with a lot of friends. Um, I grew up with a lot of friends. Um, it was always the partying, it was always the alcohol. It was always just um, so many things, so many things. But what I, um, I had a lot of bitterness. I had a lot of unforgiveness towards a lot of people. Um, man, I, I had a lot of people um, that my heart was hardened towards. And I was just so angry, eh? but yet to this world, I was so happy. And um, I told myself, Oh, I had a sibling who didn't love me, so I told him, I was like, man, if you're not going to love me, I'm going to go love this world then. <laughs> if you're not going to love me, I'm going to love this world then. I, I went out there and I found my friends. I, um, I joined in a gang thinking that um, this is life. This is all good. This is loyalty. Um, they're going to love me. And, and, and yes, they did love me. Um, and I'm not saying they didn't, but I was always trying to fill, fill in something. I was always empty. Man, I, was, I would always go to um, all these parties, always go to um, all these drink cups and, um, and to the clubs. And there'll always be moments where I'll sit there and I'm like, man, is this all? Is this all life has? Like, um, is this it? Like, and uh, um, what's it called? What happened was I had things. Um, I grew up and um, all my friends, man, I was introduced to drugs. I was intru uh, introduced to um, money. I was introduced to... Um, so, so many things, and oh, guns. I was introduced to a lot of violence. Um, it was to that point where, man, my heart was so cold, eh? Like, um, I didn't care. I didn't care if I had given someone a hiding and they died in front of me. That's how much, that's how cold I was. I didn't care. Like, there was many times I got shot, and um, it, it missed my head. If you had looked at the, 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 what's it called? Where the showers actually hit, it missed my head. And, man, no one can tell me that that's not God. Like, he saved me so many times in my life, and he was always trying to chase me, but I was always um, trying to say that, nah, I'm all good. I don't need him. You know, I was always that Sunday Christian, um, always just rock up, rock up to church so um, my mom's friend could see me and be like, oh, yeah, she could tell my mom I came to church. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, just to, so, so she could tell my mom I came to church, and I'm all good when I go home. And um, I was always just taught how to serve pastors, but I, I didn't really have a relationship um, with Jesus. I didn't know. I just thought that that was um, serving God or serving my pastors, and that, that was it. And, like, I was so um, 
man, so much stuff had happened to the point that I just didn't have any feeling. Um, I remember my, my thoughts were, my thoughts were demonic when my best friend had told me he had almost killed his, um, his girlfriend and he gave her a hiding. And my mindset was like, wow, why didn't you finish it? Do you know what I mean? Like I was cold, like I, I was real, like I didn't have a heart um, for so many people. Um, I, and I just loved my brothers and that was it. Um, I was loyal more to my brothers more than anyone else, more than my family. And um, man, if you see those people, they used to put up statuses like, I'm the realest of the realest, I'm the loyal of the loyal. Like, that was me, like, I ain't even gonna lie, that was me for a very long time. Um, I, I didn't even know what had happened, but um, I thought like, yo, this is me, it's all good. Until um, those things came, it ran dry, all the drugs, um, I had it all. I, I had the money, I had the drugs, I had the 10 million friends, man, um, the friends, I had the um, alcohol, it was parties every single weekend. But you know what was boring? Um, that you'll just debrief about the same party for the whole week and then you'll go back and you do the same thing. Like, and, and it to me was just a cycle of just emptiness and um, that, like all the things that I had, even got like, um, oh yeah, I love studying. I love studying, um, I love studying. Um, it was to the point that like, um, I would manipulate my parents in a way that because they wanted me to get those degrees, I'll do it in a way that um, I'll, get those de I'll get that degree and then I'll go do whatever I want. Like, so, so my prize was I can go do whatever I want after I get these degrees. And um, I had my masters, um, but I, I was still empty. You know, these, these things that I had in life ran me dry. Um, I was still holding a lot of bitterness. I was still holding a lot of um, unforgiveness towards people. Um, I just hated a lot of people. Um, I was I was stuck in doing meetups, thinking that that was it, thinking that this was life. Um, this is it. That's that's all life um, has got to give. And um, what? But what? Because um, I had all these things, what I couldn't fix was my broken family. I'd still go home and I'll, and I'll still get angry at my family for being the way that they were. For my, for my dad giving my mama hiding for a very long time. For all the um, hidden secrets, all the sexual molestation that no one can really talk about. And I, and I was frustrated, I was hurt, um, but I was always trying to put a smile on my face. Um, but what it was, was when it hit April, when it hit April last year, um, I hit rock bottom. Um, I sat there and I was, qu I really looked at my life and I was like, man, how do I have all these things and still have nothing? Like, how am I still empty? Like, society pushed out that I'll be like perfect or I'll be happy um, after having all these things. And I, I wasn't, I was still empty. I was still broken. I was still, my, my thoughts were ugly. Like, just everything um, in my heart was so cold. And um, I was on the verge of committing suicide. I was sick of it. I was sitting there like, how do you have all these things but you have nothing? Man, what? This um, TV's a liar. <laughs> this TV's a liar, but it was um, my little sister. So we had a massive argument at home. And I was, excuse me, and I was fighting. I was fighting with my family. And um, she, she, like her reaction was just, she just stood there and prayed. And I couldn't understand it. I was like, what the heck? How do we live in the same house, go through the same problems, yet have two different reactions? But it's because she, her peace came from God and mine came from fighting. And um, I gave up. Honestly, I knew the Lord was chasing me for a very long time, but I thought, honestly, I thought I was too good for God. And I'm gonna like, straight up just say that, like I, um, it wasn't until the Lord had humbled me and it was hard to give up all my friends. Um, but I remember the day I went up to the mountain and I cried out to God and I was like, man, what do you mean? What do you mean I gotta give up um, all my friends and um, I, I will die for them. I'll be there to the very end. What do you mean? I can't give them up. Like I will die for them. And I heard God um, speak clearly to me saying, I had already died for them. Um, I had already died for them. Who are you trying to be? And that's when I realized, man, I was no one. <laughs> I was no one but a servant, and um, he is God, and I am not God um, at all, and that really humbled me, but um, man, so much stuff had happened in a way that, man, God's, God's always been calling me, but I missed it. I missed it in my pride. I missed it in my self-righteousness, thinking that I don't need him, thinking I'm all God because I have all these things, and um, yeah, and then so I got sick of it to the point that when I was about to commit suicide, um, 
Man, God pulled through, eh? He really pulled through. He, re he really pulled through, man. I, 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 I don't know how to explain it, but um, my heart can feel. And, and, and that to me is God. Like my heart can feel, my heart, my heart can love, my heart can have this, all this joy, all this peace, all this grace. Like it's because of God. And I, I didn't understand that, man. I, and when I came to the Lord, man, I was standing there like, man, this whole time I was missing out. Like I was missing out on this. Like I'm so sorry. Who was I trying to be? <laughs> Who was I trying to be? And um, yeah, I was so broken until I came to Jesus and he really filled my heart. And then um, when I came to the Lord, I think a couple of months later, my dad had um, asked my mom for forgiveness. And, and that to me, the, the, the stubborn man that he is showed me that that's God. Like, only he could heal the things I could have never healed. I tried to heal it myself, not knowing that, man, God was there the whole time. I just needed to let go and let him do his thing. Like, man, um, man, far out. Like, I honestly had everything, and, um, but I had nothing. I had nothing, and now I have nothing but Jesus. And that, to me, is everything. Oh, sharks, that's everything. Praise Jesus. Like, man, I can't say that. Like, man, if you told me like, a year ago I would have been here talking about Jesus, I would have laughed at your face. <laughs> I would have laughed at you, but because I'm, man, I would have never. I used to laugh at people um, that used to talk about um, Jesus. And even my little sister, man, when she was driving, because I know she's going to talk about Jesus, she'll drive in the house, and I would go and fake sleep until she goes to bed. So, 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 so I could, and then when I hear her go in the room, I'm like, oh yeah, sweet, I'll get up now. But that's how much, like, um, that's, that's just how much, um, what's it called? I, I, I didn't wanna know um, Jesus, but also how much darkness I was in and um, how much that um, the devil had on, had on me. And like, just to encourage you, man, um, it's not worth, this, this life is not worth, um, not worth it without Jesus. Um, it's, it's, man, he just wants a relationship with you. And like, um, it is, man, it's, oh, also with my older, um, my older sibling, um, the one that was with the sexual molestation and everything, there's been reconciliation and forgiveness. And like, to me, honestly, Tongan families will never talk about this. They'll be like, sweep it under the carpet, no one needs to know all of this. Um, and to me, I was gonna take that to the grave. Honestly, I was gonna take her to the grave, not knowing that man, um, Jesus wants to expose all of this. He wants to heal all of this. He, he wants to um, really just mold your heart to look more like him, man. That's it, man, all he wants is your heart. That's it, far out. Like, you know, like to this world, I was like, <laughs> whatever I was, but in my room, um, I needed Jesus. Like he, he saw the tears. He, he saw, like, man, just encourage you. Like, he sees the tears. He sees the pain. He sees the hurt that you're going through. Like, man, this world's got nothing on our God. And I'm um, just, yeah, that's, man, that's um, my testimony in a nutshell. But there is just so much more. But it's a, it's a lot like, um, man, God is good, eh? Like, man, he's faithful. He's faithful not knowing if his children's ever going to come back to him. If it's just ever gonna love him, man, that gets me. Cause I'm like, man, like you died for me. You died for us. You, you died not knowing if we're ever gonna love you back. And that to me is loyalty. That to me is faithfulness. Like, ah, oh, sharks. But yeah, just man, to really encourage you um, to live 26 years in this world and had everything, yet had nothing. Honestly, Jesus is worth it. He's worth it. Um, but yeah. God bless you guys. That's just a bit about me, but um, Jesus loves you. Hi, everyone. Well, sorry, that was tiring, that whole skit. <coughs> um, yeah, my name is Lyrics, and I'm 24 years old. I have been sober and saved for two years now. So I got saved when I was 22. And yeah, I'm Samoan, a plastic Samoan. <laughs> proud. <laughs> Not proud, but yeah, um, yeah, so I grew up with both my parents, praise God, 
But when I was young, I wanted my parents to divorce because of all the abuse that I saw, the physical, verbal, emotional abuse. Like I just wanted them to split up and that caused me to hate my parents. So I, uh, yeah, so I rebelled because my parents, they didn't raise me in the Samoan, the, the, the traditional way. It was like my parents were hurt from traditional and religion way, like the way that they were brought up. So they just drank and smoked my whole life. That's all I saw them do was drink, smoke, and just beat each other up. And <clears throat> because of that, I, I hated them and I told myself I'll never be like them. And then I ended up falling into the same thing they were doing. <laughs> but um, yeah, so at the age of 16, I started smoking cigarettes. I, I needed weed. I needed weed like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like weed was like, that's all I need. I don't need food. Just give me weed and I'll be all good. You know? <laughs> and then weed didn't, didn't like, weed wasn't good enough. So I had to move up in drugs. Yes, and that was uh, meth, methamphetamine, also known as crack. Uh, yeah, I, I got addicted to that and that was pretty bad. That was really bad. I just, yeah, oh man, that was so bad. And uh, yeah, I, I was addicted to alcohol, so I loved having cigarettes, alcohol, drugs. That was like my combination, like my breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert, and everything. Yeah, and because, you know, I was broke ass, I was only 16, and I, <laughs> I couldn't afford that, so I needed to get money to do that. I started loving money and I ended up doing things that I'm not proud of. I started robbing people. I hung out with the wrong people, hung out with these boys. Not their fault, it's, it's my fault. But yeah, I hung out with these boys and they were doing the same thing. They were robbing people, stealing, you know, hustling, doing whatever they could do just to get the next, like, the next drug, the next box, the next packet of cigarettes, yeah and I followed them. And yeah, I ended up robbing people, stealing. I never thought I'd do that stuff when I was young. I was like, I'm gonna be so good. I'm gonna get like this mean ass job. But then ended up, yeah, doing that stuff. And yeah, so I did not care about my family or friends too. I ended up lying and using my family and friends. People who loved me, people who cared about me, I didn't care about them because all I wanted was um, that thing to give me joy. And yeah, I also ended up uh, homeless. I became homeless, just, that was by choice, obviously. But <laughs> yeah, and I ended up prostituting myself. So that, that was real shameful because you know, in an island family, that's the last thing that a girl would ever do was to sell her, herself for money. Yeah, that was shaming. And I ended up telling my testimony on Facebook. <laughs> And I forgot my parents are on Facebook. <laughs> I was scared. So yeah, um, I ended up sharing my testimony on Facebook when I first got saved two years ago. And I told the world basically that I sold myself for money, for drugs. And then, yeah, my mom was listening to it. And my mom was like, what? And then my dad was right next to my mom, and I was like, oh crap, what did my dad say? Uh, and then my dad was like, I'm so embarrassed, I'm so ashamed. And I was like, oh yeah, no surprises. But, but when I was so scared to see my dad because I did not want to tell him that. Like that's the last thing you ever want to tell your parents is like the worst thing you did. But then when I went to go see my dad, my dad was so awkward, he didn't even want to look at, he was just like, oh, hello. <laughs> He was like, he was like, um, he was like, what did you say on Facebook? And then I said, oh, I just shared what the Lord delivered me from. And then he was like, um, he didn't treat me any different. In fact, he loved me even more because my dad's sister, she also done the same thing. She was prostituting herself for money to get drugs. But my whole family knew, but my auntie never talked about it because she thinks she's undercover. She thinks she's secret. Like, but. I went and told like the world on Facebook, unashamed is because Jesus has set me free from that. And my dad was surprised that someone so close to him would, would be so truthful about something that you would be embarrassed about, you would be shamed of. 
my dad loved me more. So that was awesome. Praise God for that. And yeah, so I've been so bad two years. Of course, I, I have not been perfect. Of course, I've felt, I've felt, but you know, God's grace and his spirit is so amazing to bring us back. Like, even though we fall, because it says that um, we fall short of the glory of God. Like we will always fall short of the glory of God. No one is perfect, but through Jesus, only through Jesus and with Jesus, we are made perfect. And yeah, I can honestly say I'm sober here today because of God. It's not because of me, not because of anything that I could say or do, but simply because of God <laughs> and asking him for help, humbling myself. Yeah, because we can't do it on ourselves. Like everyone was shocked that I was, I became sober, you know, that, that I just gave up like cold turkey because I was the one that always rocked up to parties like with a box, with cigarettes, with all the drugs and I'll be like, yo, who's key? Yeah, but now it's like, I just rock up and it's just like, oh, it's, it's that holy girl now. Like, it's like boring. Yeah, but like, you know, God is great. Like, who can do that? Only God can do that, yeah. Yeah, God is so great. And yeah, um, nothing is impossible with God, yeah. Yeah, oh, all things are possible with God, sorry. Yeah, amen. Okay, God bless you. <laughs> wow, praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Anna. I'm 15 years of age, um, Tongan, and I love Jesus. Um, wow. God has done so many things in my life. Um, but I'm just going to share a little bit of my testimony, and then I'll encourage, I'll give you guys an encouragement. Um, I came to Christ uh, 21st of September 2019, um, and before I came to Christ, I was such a suicidal person. Um, I thought I had everything because I was the most spoiled child in the family. I thought I was so loved, but within my heart, I was so empty. I felt so lonely and I felt so unloved. And I just wanted to kill myself because I was so done with this world. And um, the night I was going to kill myself, um, the Lord spoke to my heart and he, still, he told me to stop. Stop, my child. I have a purpose for you. Um, and with that little voice, uh, um, it gave me courage that there's still an answer out there. Even though so many times I keep running back to this world, keep running back to to this world for comfort. It left me empty. And it shows how this world can leave you empty no matter how many times you run back to this world. And um, yeah, so I, um, I just started crying and I just started asking the Lord to help me because I can't do it on my own. I can't do this. And when the Lord truly helped me, um, I just felt love. I felt this peace. I felt this fulfillment that I never felt when I was in the world. Um, and I just truly do encourage you guys that Jesus does truly love you. And if you are feeling lonely, unloved, I can truly tell you Jesus is the answer. Um, and I've been through it. I went, I was such a naughty child. Um, I'll get my parents into school, hey mom. And, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'll get suspended because um, I hanged out with the wrong crowd because I wanted to, um, I wanted to please men so I can feel fulfilled. I thought being a popular kid, well, like I'll be so fulfilled, but it left me empty. It, it got me nowhere. It just left me the same cycle all over again, crying and wanting to kill myself, wanting I was so done with this world. But I truly do encourage you that Jesus does truly love you. No matter what you're going through, he will help you. Um, Matthew 11, 28, as my brother mentioned, Come to me, all who are um, um, have broken, burdened and are heavy laden, and he will give you rest. Only through Jesus you'll find true rest. Um, 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. We can put our trust in, our care and our trust in things that, that will leave us empty, that doesn't even care for us. And I can truly tell you that Jesus does truly care for you, and he wants to have relationship with you. Myself, I grew up in church my whole life. Um, I just went to please my parents. I went to um, wear my gig and I thought, oh, this is going to get me to heaven. My attendance to church will get me to heaven. It won't. Your, your religion won't save you. Your pastor won't save you. Your church, your mother's prayers won't save you. It's a relationship with Christ. I finally came um, to an understanding that, um, 
that my works are not going to save me, um, that Jesus does truly want a genuine relationship with you. And that's all. He wants you just to have faith and have a relationship with him because he's willing to take you in. Are you willing? Are you willing to give your all to Christ? Um, before I used to go, oh, I'll just come to Jesus when I'm ready. Um, I'll come to him when I'm ready and all that. But I can truly tell you, you'll never be ready until you come to Christ. You're, you have to come to Christ to be ready. And he will change your heart because only he can do the changing. And um, yeah, just really know that Jesus does truly love you guys. I love you guys, but Jesus loves you best. And yeah, God bless.